I grew up in a little bay. It's like seven kilometers from like Palm Beach over the water. We get a lot of water run out, a lot of cold water, but it was perfect for longboarding growing up there. And you know, there just like wasn't many kids doing it. There was like me and another friend. And then like even amongst my high school years, there was still only a couple of us that rode longboards really or alternative boards in general. And then like I was just around a lot of older crew that rode longboards, a lot of people that moved out of Sydney and moved up to the central coast to find, you know, a bit of a quieter place to live and somewhere to retire. And so there was a good bunch of older surfers that sort of led the way for me to kind of understand longboarding a little better. Starting off, like it was always roll bottom boards with like concave and stuff like that. And they felt good, but I started to move towards like high performance longboarding for a little while and, and rode those to compete. That was like maybe 2008 through to like 2012, 2013. And then I won an Australian title then, riding a high performance longboard and then kind of just ended up moving away from it. And you know, growing up, like there was a local collector nearby and he would just sort of like push me onto riding old males and dad was always pushing me in that direction as well. And then after that, I got really into boards from, from 1966, 1967, and just basically rode roll bottom longboards with like really knifey rails and like 9.4 to 9.6 for like a good four years. And then I started moving further into like more panel V in the tail, pretty similar nose, pretty similar rocker, uh, still with pinch rails. And then nowadays it's a kind of, kind of trying to find like a happy balance between riding something that's a bit wider and a bit longer. It still has that same glide and, and trim speed as say like a, a traditional Californian style longboard that I can ride in waves that we, we've had today, but then still be able to ride it back home and be able to manage pretty well. But I try to keep it pretty, pretty open mind with all that kind of stuff. Like I've got a fair few boards at home that have like deep concave in the nose and like deep roll in the tail and like a lot of flip, like kind of nose rider. But like, I just always tend to fall back to my Californian. It's just like super comfortable under my feet. And yeah. I can always enjoy, enjoy the waves on it. Yeah, I mean, I just get bored. I get bored riding the same style of longboard all the time. Um, so I like kind of changing it up and trying to I have a bit of versatility within my surfing and a different approach. Riding different boards, it's like I feel like you can surf one board really well and and that's your style, but being able to hold your style and like transition through a bunch of different boards is, is something I've kind of been striving to achieve. But yeah, I find with making boards, it's almost like spun me out a little bit because I think about it too much. And when I think about it too much, I'll think about riding my own boards and I'm like, I really enjoy them for like the first little period. And then I kind of just tend to move away from them because I thinking about the design aspects a lot more and like how I can change it. So then I like end up selling it like a couple weeks later or whatever and like trying to make another one. And you know, just having that, that base in having the Cream Californian is really nice and then being able to like jump on like whatever I've got laying around at home. Like I've got an old Pearson Arrow, like CJ Nelson, like 10-2 and like, you know, 24 inches wide, 20 inch nose. And I kind of take that out sometimes, which is like such a big difference to what I usually ride, you know? And then it's like back at home, it's like split up between riding longboards and riding shortboards, you know? I don't like necessarily always ride a longboard, you know, ride everything from like a 5.5 five Campbell Brothers, like 5.8 five, five fin Campbell Brothers egg and like little fishes. So it's just whatever really I feel like riding. Sometimes they don't suit the conditions, sometimes they do. And I just like try and figure out why each design works and where it works. It's a lot more to, to do with like changing your approach to a wave because every board has their different sweet spot, has a different slow spot and like working out how to change your approach to be able to surf a wave at a top level or whatever and, and still like maintain your own like aesthetic to it. It's like the Californian is like, I don't really need to generate speed. I don't really need to push a whole lot to be able to maintain speed. <laughs> That's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of like a weird question to, to answer for me because like, obviously everyone's got their own approach to it. The criteria that we're sort of trying to surf to, as a whole, it 
it encapsulates surfing the entire wave, you know, from top to bottom, from roundhouse to like nose ride, you know, but it's just like maintaining that traditional aspect of it that's definitely key. You've seen in a lot of like the longboarding contests of late where people are surfing amazing. Like I can't, I, I'm not going to take that away from them, but like for me, I love to see surfing that's utilizing the whole wave face, you know? And just like trying to maintain and generate speed as well as like wash off speed, you know, and, and utilize like every single part of the board. The progression has got to come from like holding your tradition in the history and like looking towards the history to move forward through each era. Utilizing the board more, you know, letting the board flow. I think the women are kind of upholding the, the longboarding scene a lot better than uh, quite a few of the men, you know? It just seems like their, their grace and their style, it suits the longboard so well. And it's rooted in tradition, but a lot of those girls, they don't like look to the history of surfing, which is quite impressive because they, it's just nat it just comes naturally to them. And you can see that in like in girls like Khalees. Coming from Hawaii, she's she's got a lot of power and a lot of control in, in quite critical sections. And there's a lot of other girls there too. It's like Sole, Erico, who's really like starting to like utilize the whole wave face, which is quite impressive to watch. You know, and it's like it's like flowing and it's you know, there's like tight nose rides and you know, like drawing it right down to the trough and even out into the flats before like bringing it back up and into the face again which is quite cool to see, you know, like there's, a, there's so much room on a wave to be utilized. I find it so hard to understand how you can just try and utilize the top third all the time. It's so impressive that they, they have that power and they have that composure to be able to, you know, style it out with grace as well and, and do it just the way that like longboarding should be done. Yeah, I definitely like walk out of the heat pretty frustrated sometimes, but I do that the same as when I'm out in the surf anyways, you know, like free surfing. When things don't connect, it's, it, it, it is frustrating. When things do connect, it feels amazing. And then there was moments in those heats where, they, where it all did connect, but I, I didn't feel like I sold it to the judges that I was the top surfer in the event. I guess I'm just bringing like a slightly different approach that's like fresh for people to see. And it's just the way that I like to surf. It's hard to like try and fit my surfing into the criteria as well as it's hard for me to like try and surf at 60% the whole time, which is basically what the criteria is asking from me. And I, I, a lot of other people too, like Taylor and, and a few other guys. And I feel like toning back is quite a hard thing to do when all I want to do is try and do something different and fall off, yeah. you know? Like I, I, don't, I don't really want to be making waves all the time. I want to like feel that progression. I want to feel like, oh, that, there was a moment in what I did through that turn that felt really nice. Yeah. And it's not trying to put together this whole performance. It's just trying to give like longboarding a bit of spice, I guess, yeah. like change, change the approach a little bit. feedback from a lot of the surfers that like on Instagram and stuff is super nice like I'm I feel very lucky to have support from a, a vast array of people across the world I feel like like Tori is doing a, a good thing for longboarding and she's trying to do the best job she can do and she's a great person she surfs great and she is like a person that should be the head judge for, for us like in the younger generation. But I just feel like she needs a, a panel of longboarders that are there to carry on what she's trying to do. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's lost a little bit between the, the judges that they have on board at the moment, which is kind of sad. You can see it throughout this year's events. There's just been moments where it's thrown really high scores at something that was quite not, not all that amazing and then thrown really low scores at other things that were like very worthy for a bigger score. I, I don't feel like you're, you're learning if you're, if you're not making mistakes. You have to make mistakes to be able to understand like certain parameters. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoy making mistakes the whole time. Like I'll, I'll go out and surf and I'll try and surf at like 100% and push every turn and try and put the 
the board into parts of the wave face that like were unexpected like guys like Cody Simpkins and people like that really kind of inspire me to surf harder and, and like utilize the board and put the board into different places. I love watching John John do like big down calves. It's funny, I tend to like go back to Cody Simpkins more often than not. Like I always love watching Joel surf, his flow and his weight distribution and how he works with that. And guys like Ryan and Bryce, you know, on their like parallelogram things. And yeah, and then like guys like Harry Roach and you know, local guys in Australia too. And there's a lot of like local surfers around me that really inspire me. And quite a few friends from down Sydney way that are super cool and like have their own like approach to surfing. But it's also just like blending, like taking bits and pieces from all over the place. Um, yeah. I think his surfing was just like so unique at that point in time. And he was doing the same as what what we were looking at as well, you know, like looking at Nat and his power and maybe like the way that Tom Curran is like keeping his flow and like surfing tight in the pocket or whatever. It's hard, I can't really speak for him, but yeah. I definitely think it was like a very unique way of surfing. Um, and those boards that he was riding at the time, like the Gato Hores, yeah. were like just so well suited to that style of surfing. Oh. It'd be cool to be able to blow up his surfing a little bit more because yeah. I don't, no one really knows and like he deserves the respect because he did some of the best surfing that's even to this day is a lot better than a, a lot of the stuff you see online. Yeah, so um, I guess like the thing with my brand is I'm really not trying to grow it and like push it too hard. I really want to like have it grow authentically on its own and not like using my name too much. And with Korea, they hit me up through my personal Instagram and I kind of met one of the guys in Bali a few a few years back and he was super lovely and we, we like chatted for a fair while and he ended up starting a store over there and wanted me to make some boards. And yeah, it's something that I was like almost cautious about because I didn't know if I was like good enough to be making boards for like you know international business and I, I loved like the personal engagement between customers as well so trying to translate the boards that I make to people that are from the other side of the world is quite difficult and you know near impossible but I guess I just got lucky and you know they just wanted to be a part of the things that I build and it's really cool it seems like it's really emerging there you know like a friend was telling me the other day when they have a surf contest or whatever it's like based on how many years you've been surfing you know, really? so if you've been surfing for three years, then like you're competing against other people who've been surfing for three years. And like, that's how new and fresh it is. It's amazing. It's so cool. I really, I really like that. You know, like it seems like they have a lot of energy and in a culture nowadays that is so highly saturated with people that are burnt out or put off by surfing yeah. or the industry, you know, because there's either no money in it or like they're putting too much work into something that doesn't have any return, you know, but they're just stoked to be a part of the culture you know they really want to build the culture and and do it for themselves over there in Korea yeah. which is rad yeah.